A mask isn't perfect. A seatbelt isn't perfect. We have to figure out how to make things work in our lives to protect ourselves when nothing is perfect. So one of the big misnomers that we get involved with in this mask world or washing your hands world or whatever is people ask the question in perfection terms. Is it possible that I could possibly get infected if I was wearing um, you know, this kind of mask? You know, anything is possible, but the question is how do you reduce uh, the risk? So imagine that your nose reduces the likelihood of a virus getting to your throat by about, let's say 80%, just for round numbers. And that a mask reduces the likelihood of a virus getting to your nose by, let's say 80%. And that saying six feet away reduces the likelihood of a virus getting to your mask by, let's say 80%. Now all combined, you're in the high 99s uh, by putting those three things together. Any two of them together would get you 96% safe. Uh, and any one of them would be 80%. So adding things together makes, uh, makes you more and more uh, safe. What does a mask do? Uh, if you think about viruses, viruses are always dying. Viruses aren't bacteria. Bacteria are always trying to grow. A virus does not grow outside of a body. So the first way to get infected is by touching your face. Even surgeons touch their faces all the time. Everybody does. It's the right, you know, it's humankind. But if the mask is there, you keep that infection from happening. Whether it's a crummy mask or a great mask, it doesn't matter, it works. The second way of getting infected is with a droplet of water that's teeming with viruses. You know, a droplet of water might have a million copies of a virus in it, and that droplet gets into your nose and you've got a million copies in your nose, right? If that droplet hits your mask, even a crummy mask, it stops on the outer layer uh, almost always, and therefore it doesn't get to, to being the problem. By the time that droplet dries out completely and we just have virus particles, tiny little particles, they're mostly dead because virus particles don't live very well without moisture, right? And therefore, if they did come through the mask, there are one, lot less of them, and two, they're not likely to be infectious anymore by the time they get to you. Now, one of the key components of figuring out how to behave in this whole new world is figuring out where you can be safe and, and where you're not. If you're a doctor and you're going into the operating room, you behave differently when you're all suited up and scrubbed up than when you're out of the operating room, right? So we need to do that same sort of idea when we're um, going from our safe house or car out into a shopping center or, you know, for a, a walk on a crowded uh, street. Don't do anything special when you're in your safe zone. But when you're not in your safe zone, that's when you pay attention to how to not get infected. I actually brought some demos because, you know, you like demos. A lot of people talk about masks as uh, being a problem. Let me just show you a couple of different ideas. Everybody uh, complains about bandanas. Bandanas are just a piece of cloth. Maybe it's an old shirt. You know, you cut into a square, you cut the square into a thing, you fold it into a, a, a triangle and, you know, and put it on. These things are really good. You'll go to the press and uh, on the internet and find that you could, uh, if you put a little cannon full of little particles the size of uh, virus particles, you can blow them right through a four-layer bandana. And that's true. <laughs> Does that mean a four-layer bandana wouldn't help you resist getting infected? No, uh, it's very good. An old shirt. I've got a 90-something-year-old mother who made one out of a pair of underwear. But a towel wrapped around a couple times is perfectly good as well. You don't need to go buy, uh, you know, the world's best stuff to have really great protection. Uh, this is a N95 mask. Um, you can see it's bigger uh, and, it, and, and it's got more fuzz around the edges than the sort of thing you might get in a hardware store to protect you from paint. Um, this one is called N95 because it's 95% effective at stopping particles of a certain size. Notice the name says it's not perfect, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and it shouldn't be perfect. N95s are particularly good at not letting uh, 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 air float around the edges and they, the air breathes in nicely. The, the kind you use for paint aren't quite as good at that, but we wear these all the time in my family. They're cheap, they're easy to come by, um, uh, they, they, work, they work fine. But uh, a lot of people in my family got involved in making uh, making homemade masks and they start out with this kind 
with uh, a seam down the middle and it, you know the inside two layers at, le at least and four little strings coming out um, you, you know different people have different colors and you know they start to look good and i'm pretty sure we're all going to get the the fashion of masks kind of working in our in our favor this is my uh, my wife's favorite uh, mask now it's got a sort of a dangly string there and the idea is you put it over your head this way oops not that way <laughs> the idea is that it's got an inside and an outside and if you um there we go if you put it over your head like that and then you can pull it on and tie it it's a little easier to put on and off it also lets you just wear it walking around uh and when you're outside in nobody in sight but all of a sudden a crowd of people are coming by you could put your mask on and 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 make it easy because completely outside is a pretty safe place to be with no people in sight but if you're on a city corner with a whole crowd of folks that's not a particularly good place to be so you 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 could uh, use use your mask in that way <laughs>